Bristol is relaxed. Pretty laid back. People get on, you know. There's more hippies than hipsters. It's got quite a small town feel to it. It feels like it's got everything that London has, but it's smaller. The biggest village in the world, really. Musically great city. It's a beautiful place. Because we're 120 miles away from London, I think there is a certain attitude. It's kind of like two things up to a sort of establishment. There is a, a willingness to experiment and do things a little bit differently. I don't feel that people are prone to following fashions as such in Bristol. You know, we have got something here, you know, there's a vibe here that you just can't capture anywhere else. This is who we are, this is what we do, you know what I mean? We don't need to try and prove anything to anyone else. That's the Bristol energy. In the 60s, Bristol witnessed a huge influx of migrants from around the world. You know, Bristol is a massive melting pot of different cultures, and it has got a sound, and it's black, it's white, it's Irish, it's Indian. African, and that is where the culture of music in Bristol has grown. The coming together and sharing of cultures and music resulted in the birth of a unique Bristol sound. Bristol's sort of famous for trip-hop, if you like, whatever that means. There were influences from hip-hop, influences from dub reggae, um, from all over the place, and that's kind of contributed to it having its own kind of unique Bristol sound. The whole thing started to develop from a period of maybe 91, through to 96 was the most exciting times when everything was still quite young and still quite fresh. This proved to be the defining period for Bristol as it stamped its mark on the music map. If you listen to a lot of the music which came out of Bristol, would it be like Ronnie Size or Mass Attack and Porter's Head and Tricky and all the obvious big names, there's a definite bass thread running through all the music. This town's got a bass heavy thing. It's the bass, it's the Bristol bass. They like their bass here. You feel the bass in your teeth. If you've got fillings, you better watch it because they'll just fall down on the floor. Yeah, it's deep. It's always about getting plenty of bass in the mix. Heavy bass lines, you know, that's what it's about. That's what it is. That's what it is, man. I think there was a lot of um, significant clubs which were sort of pivotal in the whole Bristol thing, you know? In the early 80s, it was the legendary dugout club which became the spiritual as well as the physical home of the city's music scene. It's kind of still to this day fated as kind of Bristol's Hacienda or, or Studio 54. It was a tiny, crappy little basement that uh, had a really unpleasant carpet. That place was so so used, you know, you, you, your feet stick to the carpet when you walk in there and stuff. I was a bit too young to get into these clubs myself. I remember just standing outside and banging on the door and you know, wondering if I can get into the get in there, but I could never get in there. But it was great because I always imagined what it would be like. It was the best club there's ever been in Bristol and probably one of the best clubs ever in the world. You had people from downtown and people from uptown coming in, bikers, punks, do you know what I mean? Reggae heads, dub heads. It was a place where everyone went who basically didn't have to be up for work in the morning. It certainly represented a kind of time when everyone was, was there was, seemed to be a lot of energy and a lot of creativity in the city. Just a memory of you. Bristol's now got a pretty good range of, of live music venues. Obviously, you've got the Colston Hall and the Academy at the, at the Brigger End, which are both really good. The equally, places like Louisiana, which I think is the best 100 pasty venue in the country by, by a mile. It's steeped in history, it's been putting music on for over 100 years. Every band that kind of makes it tends to play at Louisiana first. Why you do the things you do? It's got this little pub kind of character, but the sound system's amazing. The Louisiana has got really good sound and that's benefited actually from a load of noise complaints. And because they had a lot of noise complaints, they were forced to sort of refit it and um, soundproof it. It's actually, sounds great now. The Thepp is another one that has always had a fantastic reputation, just because it's such a uh, unique place. For me, that's the, uh, the essence of Bristol, that club, in the sense. It's, it's got a kind of proper Bristol vibe, a really good sound system, which is so important, I think. Since it's been revamped, it's a great hub for for touring acts. We're finding international acts want to play Bristol because there's that great audience. You're about to witness Shape the Day, New Zealand's best live band ever! The crowd are up for it and want to enjoy their music. This is our first ever time in Bristol when we're on the mighty Thickland. Sounds pretty fat in there. Bristol's been 
inspirational to us in many varied styles. It's well known in New Zealand as one of the homes of drum and bass. So we're really honoured to come here and actually have the opportunity to drop some sub bass frequencies for the eardrums. People abroad talk about this place because of whole music scene and, you know, it makes me kind of like feel good that they think that, you know, it's, it's good to think that you just don't live in a, you know, that people think that your place isn't just a dull, old, boring place in the West Country, you know what I mean? <laughs> The consensus is that Bristol is the scene of trip hop and dub and drum and bass, but there's lots of other little bits to it as well. I mean, there's some great rock bands. In Bristol, music today is guitars, it is computers, it is live drums, it is a drum machine, it is a vocalist, it is a vocoder, it is, you know, trip hop, it is dubstep, it is drum and bass, it is jungle, it is. It's rock, it's indie, it's festivals, it's indoor, it's outdoor, it's no smoking, it's smoking, it's, it's all those things, that's what it is. One of my favourite bands from Bristol that's quite away from what people call the Bristol sound is Gravenhurst. <laughs> The thing about Bristol is it actually attracts a lot of bands, it's quite it's not like a magnet, particularly at the moment. If you're an interesting band, then yeah, you'll, you'll probably get noticed pretty quickly. And, and Venue, the, the local listings magazine, is, is, is really good. It is uh, very sort of uh, su supportive and, and will pick up on, on new bands pretty quickly. Malachi are possibly the next big thing to come out of Bristol. Uh, they've certainly got the talent um, and they seem to be getting the, the attention they deserve. One year is Massive Attack, then the next year is Port Z, and then is Ronnie, and then is someone else. And we came along, I suppose, this year. We do. Yeah. Malachi, another great band that mixes kind of kind of raw dynamics with elements of dub, reggae, and punk. Which are, uh, and they're another uniquely Bristol-sounding band. How many I think if you're doing something that's quality, it's going to get recognised. Someone's going to get wind of it that so and so's doing something which is really good, and um, you know, someone's going to pick up on it. Um, get off. The only advice I give to anyone trying to break through is just to gig as much as possible. Just get out there, get your music heard. Be brave enough to follow your own, really follow your instincts, and follow what you like. I think you just have to believe. Leave it all the way. You know, don't rest on your laurels at any point. You just keep on always moving forward. It's not really about what kind of jeans you wear or your shoes you wear. It's just about, at the end of the day, it's about great songs. Make something unique, different and fresh. Just work hard at it and just try and um, get off. Don't work with people in monkey mass. Keep doing it, you know, um, because it can take you a lot of places for free. <laughs> <laughs> it's wicked. <laughs>